picking up where we left off in the last video, I'm going to have a look at some other processes for factorizing and solving here. The second problem, I have changed just slightly. So if you copied the answer down, I've just changed that number there to make it so it's actually possible to do this way. Um, so what we're going to do in this process is we're going to use the grouping method. This grouping method is typically used uh, when we have polynomials with four terms. And what we can do is we can kind of break it into two parts and then try to find a common factor uh, across each of those parts. So you can see I've done here. Now, they can be grouped in almost any way, like you just have to have a common factor uh, which can be taken out. So yeah, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. I think this is gonna work out pretty nicely. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a common factor from the first part, which would be z squared. And when I take z squared out, I've got z minus 2i left. I've got a common factor in the next part of negative 6. So I'm going to take that negative 6 out. And then I'm left with z minus 2i again. So... The reason for taking the negative out there was to make it so that the factor inside the brackets here was going to be the same as it was in the first part. Okay, And we can see now in that second line that we have a common factor of z take 2i. So I'm going to take that out as a common factor. And I'm left with z squared minus 6. So the last thing is then to factorize the quadratic part of this by using difference of two squares. So we've got z take 2i, we've also got z plus root 6 and z take root, six, root 6. And so that's completely factorized now and so I can say therefore z is equal to 2i and z is equal to plus or minus root 6 again just using the null factor law. In the third question, z to the 4 minus 81 equals 0. Well, this is really just the difference of two squares or difference of two fours, something like that. Um, but we can uh, treat this just as a difference of two squares problem. So I'm going to jump in and just do that straight away. So that's going to leave z squared plus 9 and z squared take 9 equals 0. So factorizing each of these now, well, the first one's only going to be possible over complex numbers. So I'm going to change it to z squared minus 9i squared. And I'll just leave that one there as it is for now. And then I'm going to factorize these. So z plus 3i, z take 3i would be the first one. The second one is going to be z plus 3 and z take 3. And so again, using the null factor law here, we can say that z equals plus or minus 3i and z also equals plus or minus 3. And those are the solutions. Now, this is, um, I guess, one of the properties of any polynomial and um, it goes all the way back to... Uh, Carl Frederick Gauss back in uh, the late 1700s but he came up with this idea the fundamental theorem of algebra which basically says that any polynomial will have the same number of solutions as its degree so a polynomial of degree 4 should have 4 solutions which we can see in that last question a polynomial of degree 3 should have 3 solutions which we can see in the other 2 solutions um, so just something to keep in mind when you're doing these problems Furthermore, these can be done on your calculator, but we'll have a look at that in the next video, so see you then.